It's off inside of the Holmes Convocation Center from Boone, North Carolina, an old school mountain rivalry. It's the Appalachian State Mountaineers playing host to the ETSU Buccaneers. And hi everyone, we welcome you inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Kendall Lewis alongside John Reister here with you on ESPN Plus tonight. We're glad you're tuned in from wherever you may be. So John, let's jump right into it tonight. You have two of arguably the better mid-major programs out there right now. App State, the defending Sun Belt champions. ETSU picked to finish third in the Southern Conference, but this is a team that is used to being at the top of the SOCOM when you go back the last five years. Kendall, we've got two loaded rosters. We got veteran leadership. We got scoring. We've got assist guys. We got athletic guys getting after it. It's going to be an exciting night. Holmes Convocation Center is rocking right now. We've got a big crowd. Wow, this, this is going to be a great first opening game for the Mountaineers here at home. Let's jump right into our starting lineups tonight for the ETSU Buccaneers. They are in the road blue unis with the gold letters and gold numbers. See Ty Brewer, Ladarius Brewer, the preseason All-Southern Conference selection. To jump it up, it's James Lewis Jr. against Ty Brewer. And college basketball is back, mountain style. It's the Buccaneers that win the opening tip. You see the App State starting lineups on your screen coming off of a loss to Iona on Tuesday night. Quickly, ETSU dumps it inside. And a decade with the opening deuce of the contest gets the Buccaneers out in front early. And here come the Buccaneers. They're going to put pressure on the Mountaineers all over the floor, looking to establish the inside game. Justin Forrest drops it off, two-handed flush from Donovan Gregory. And this crowd's rocking already, Kim. This is going to be an awesome atmosphere to play basketball. Largest crowd in the Holmes Convocation Center in many years. ETSU traveling from just over an hour away in Johnson City, Tennessee. Glad to have you with us tonight. This should be a classic Friday night in the mountains. They dump it inside a decade again. Trying to go to work on James Lewis Jr. Turn around, off the heel, and Delph pulls down the rebound. Here come the Mountaineers. They'll push the, op the pace when the opportunity presents itself. Step back, Jay. And what we just saw right there, Kendall, is James Lewis Jr. coming up 245 pounds. He's going to set a high screen above the three-point line for whoever's bringing the ball up. That's what sprung Delph loose for that uh, wide-open shot. Right here, number four in blue, David Sloan, preseason All-Southern Conference selection for the Buccaneers. Again, everything goes through a decade here in the opening minute and a half. He dishes it out. King's a shooter and leaves it short. Here comes Justin Forrest. He's a two-time All-Sun Belt selection for the Mountaineers. He's probably going to be the Mountaineers' leading career scorer by the end of this year. And it's raining threes. Inside of the Holmes Convocation Center right now, a 7-2 start for Dustin Kearns' crew. This is a Mountaineers team, and they're lost to Iona on Tuesday night, John. Only three made threes the entire game. Yeah, they were three for 22, Kendall, and they're going to shoot a lot better at home. Tap back, foul. That's the first whistle of the contest, and Justin Forrest is the culprit on the foul. Picks up his first. And they're going to say foul was on the floor. So David Sloan will be the trigger man for the Buccaneers of ETSU. And what we saw, Ken, we saw it really crashing the board. The Bucks, 20 offensive rebounds the other night uh, in their scrimmage against Catawba. They really attacked the glass. Active hands from Delph. Lost the control momentarily. Good fight inside. James Lewis. Couldn't get it to go over the taller a decade. And back comes David Sloan in the Bucks. Trailer three, and it's long. 7-0 run for the Mountaineers over the last 145. Terrence Harkum, the freshman, surveys the floor for the Mountaineers. Almonese loves the corner. Can't get it to go. And ETSU, this is a team that wants to get up and down what a move by Sloan, but he missed the bunny. And here come the Mountaineers trying to cash in again. And I tell you what, Kendall, they're getting up and down. This is the pace that the Bucks want to play. 
Mountaineers want to kind of grind it out a little bit in the half course court. Dell thought about the three. Instead, he'll drop it off. James Lewis lowers the shoulder. It's a blocking foul called on the Buccaneers. David Sloan will pick up his first. And let's take a look at Ladarius Brewer, our player to watch tonight for the ETSU Buccaneers. This guy right here, the top NBA prospect in the Southern Conference right now, John. He's 6'5". He's got the length and the athleticism to make it and make a professional career. Well, and he shoots 39% from three-point range, and he's got NBA range on his shot. So he scores at all three levels. Kid's an outstanding player. It's going to be fun to watch tonight. Put back from Donovan Gregory. 9-2 start, 9-0 run for the Mountaineers. 16 and a half to go in the first half. Donovan Gregory didn't have his typical game against Iona the other night. I'm sure he's trying to get out here and prove a point to the Mountaineer fans. David Sloan surveys, kicks. Ty Brewer splashes a three. And that was a big time bucket for the Buccaneers. Their first made triple of the contest. And it stops a two and a half minute scoring drought for the Buccaneers. It allows them to get into their pressure. They're going to show token pressure early. They're going to really come after you later in the game. Delph cuts. Almonacy surveys, stops. Now he'll bounce it to RJ Duhart. Harcum thought about it. Shot clock's at seven. Delph, catch and shoot three. And this one's going to get up and over the backboard and go back to the Buccaneers. We have reached our first media timeout here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. 9-5 Appalachian State. We've got a good one tonight, mountain style on ESPN+. Plus. It's App State by four, 9-5, 15-47 to go in the first half here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Kendall Lewis, John Reister. John, let's get your keys to the game tonight for both teams. Well, tempo's going to be very important. Appalachian's got a history. They want to grind it out in the half court, run the shot clock down, and, and, and try to work it a little bit. ETSU, they want to go, go, go. They want to play fast. What I think is going to be the determining factor in the game is who wins the paint. Appalachian was minus 14 in the paint versus Iona. ETSU, 38 points in the paint versus Catawba. So that's, I think that's what we need to focus on tonight. David Sloan controls the rock for the Buccaneers. Here's Ladarius Brewer, 25 in blue, 4 and 25. Those, that's the one-two punch for the Buccaneers. Probably the best one-two punch in the Southern Conference, arguably. Brewer slices in, had it knocked out of his hands, but a foul on, if it's Justin Forrest, that is his second, less than five minutes into the ball game, and it is. Forrest picks up his second. That is crucial right now, the first half. Yeah, that's a big problem for the Mountaineers, and I know Justin's disappointed. He's got to sit down. He's going to be sitting down for a while because we're still real early in this game. He can't afford to pick up his third foul. And Dustin Kern's got him out of there quick. Sloan's the trigger man. Charlie Weber has checked in for the first time. 6-9 frame for ETSU. Brewer from deep. This one tapped out right back to Ladarius. You have two Brewers on the floor, Ladarius and Ty. They are brothers from Massachusetts. Ladarius 25, Ty is in 14. Shot clock's at seven. Sloan launches, and a good box out. Rebound off to Michael Eads. He'll take it up the floor for the Mountaineers. The Mountaineers going to have to box out. Bucks 20 offensive rebounds the other night against Catawba. That was ETSU's exhibition game. Stop and pop for the freshman, Terrence Harkum. And that kid was a big time scorer in high school, and, and he's got a beautiful shot. And in fact, he's getting minutes in this game, shows Dustin Kearns got a lot of confidence in the young kid. The only true freshman to see minutes for Dustin Kearns against Iona on Tuesday night. Mountaineers by six. Brewer slicing to the bucket. Trying oh, to throw it down. Oh. My goodness, Ladarius Brewer. And that's Frequent that, flyer miles. That's that NBA potential right there. Hammering it down in a crowd. You don't see that much at this level, Kendall. That kid's a player. Delph slices in. Can't get it to go. Trying to tip it back. And it's out of bounds. It'll go back to the Buccaneers. Last touched by the Mountaineers. And let's take a look at this throwdown here. My goodness. That takes a lot of upper body strength along with some hops to get that ball through on two guys right there at the rim. That's impressive. 
took it through contact. Brewers and NBA prospects, as we told you, 6'5 frame, slowed off the screen. Facing up, Patterson can shoot it. Sloan will back it away with seven on the shot clock. Good D by the Mountaineers. Sloan in the paint, kicks, open three for Patterson, and he buries it. Vani Patterson, the senior from Louisville, Kentucky, lefty can stroke it, John. And he's streaky, Candle. Once he gets going, he can knock three or four down in a row. Everybody out there, forget ETSU right now, can shoot the three. That's going to pose a problem for the Mountaineers defensively. They're going to have to really extend out. Almonese absorbs the contact. Delph looking inside, nothing there. ETSU will switch it up defensively under first-year head coach Desmond Oliver. Almonese lost the handle, shot clocks at one. Delph from NBA range. Thought he might have gotten hit on the arm on that. Officials disagreed. Sloan, a catch and shoot with in transition. And ETSU has the lead. Here at the 1241 mark of the first half. And they're really pushing it on misses on the, for the Mountaineers. They got down in a blink of an eye and they did it with a pass instead of the dribble. Brewer cheated out, nearly got the steal. Duhart slices in, blocked by Sloan. He's charged with the foul though. Got a little bit of the arm as Duhart went up. And that's the second team foul of the Buccaneers here at the 1229 mark. And I like it that Duhart's attacking the rim. Mountaineers offensively are doing a lot on, around the perimeter, but they're not posting or ducking in at the front of the rim, which is a little surprising to me. They did a good job of that against Iona. So um, they need to continue to attack, and they, and they need to get ETSU in foul trouble because they're very young once they get past their first five players. Yeah, no question about it. ETSU, as we told you, picked to finish third in the Southern Conference. Always one of the most quality mid-major programs in the country, though, at least over the last five years. Gregory missed it on the doorstep, and ETSU can build on their two-point lead right here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Patterson thought about another three. Open look this time from Seymour. The transfer from Wichita State can't connect, and back come the Mountaineers. And Seymour's a talented 6'8 sophomore can really fill the bucket up when he gets going. Delph sets his feet, drives in, lowers the shoulder, it's an offensive foul. ETSU basketball. And Delph didn't need to lower his shoulder. He was in a good position to get a nice little eight foot jump shot on the smaller. King had three inches and about 20 pounds on him. We'll take a timeout. You're watching college basketball on ESPN Plus from the Holmes Convocation Center. There's Desmond Oliver, first year head coach for the ETSU Buccaneers. You see it, 27 years of Division I coaching experience he brings to Johnson City, Tennessee, and a Rick Barnes disciple John, you know a little bit about this guy. A great recruiter is what he's known as. He's one of the top recruiters in Division I basketball, and, and look at the, the talent that he brought into Tennessee the last six years. And I'm going to tell you what, kids are going to love to play for this guy because he lets them get up and down. They play fast pace. That's what everybody wants to do. Steal by Mantis. Nice pass up ahead. Gregory up and good. And I like it when the Mountaineers get out and run, Kendall. I know they want to grind it out in the half court, but they, they've got the kind of players that can get out and go. Open look for Vonnie Patterson, and he drains it. Vonnie Patterson, ice in his veins in the first half. That's two made triples for the Buccaneers. We told you he's a shooter. And contact out in front. The foul against Seymour. Jaden Seymour from Charlotte, North Carolina. His... He's a transfer. Wait a minute. And now it's going to go against App State. Dustin Kearns is irate. He wants an explanation. Yeah, I don't understand that. It was, it was an obvious call on Seymour. I don't know where they spun it around and put it on uh, Donovan Gregory. It is ETSU basketball. Four team fouls against the Mountaineers in the first half. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you. Jordan King slipped but kept the dribble alive somehow. Yasser 
This one tipped out. Whistle and a foul on the Bucks over the back. That'll be the third team foul on ETSU here in the first half. And Mountaineer basketball and a little token pressure coming from ETSU. Well, they, Mountaineers have got some young guys out there right now, so it would not surprise me for them to bring some hardcore pressure, especially since you got Justin Fors, one of your uh, main ball handlers, uh, saddled with two fouls sitting over there next to Dustin Kearns. Michael Almonese with the basketball now. Set a Sunbelt tournament record 20 made threes in the Mountaineers' magical four-day run to a Sunbelt championship and an NCAA tournament appearance last year. Mantis, the freshman. Offensive board from James Lewis, and he was fouled. A lot of contact. I really like the way James Lewis really fought and went up strong there. He really struggled against Iona, missed some buckets really close to the basket. Good to see him using his strength to go up strong, gets a free throw line. Lewis fighting through contacts. This is a guy right here, James Lewis Jr., the senior from Mount Holly, North Carolina, who took three charges on Tuesday night against Iona. A coach's dream. And I'll tell you, John, right now, you and I had a chance to see him two years ago, and you look at his body compared to what it was two years ago. My goodness. Well, they still list him at 215, and I don't know why they do that because <laughs> he's a good 245, maybe 250, and he's got it all in the right places too. Goes one for two with the charity stripe. It is a two-point first half, just over 10 to go here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. An old school mountain rivalry that dates back 60 years. Here's the skip pass. Patterson thought about it again. Deflected. Here's the kick out. Extra pass this time to Yasser. He'll pull up and cash in. And I tell you, Yasser's a player, 6'5 freshman. He played on the African NBA Developmental League Championship team overseas this summer. So he's seen a lot of good competition. Michael Almonese, fifth year player, came back, had an extra year of eligibility. This Mountaineers team, they want to go back to back in the Sun Belt this year, and they've got a target on their back. And Delf slices and draws the contact again. And I tell you what, I like that adjustment by Dustin Kearns. He's got uh, six foot, uh, probably a buck 75 at the most guard, guarding Adrian Delf. So he moved him inside down to the block and posted him up. Stealing a little bit from Rick Patino because that's what he did to the Mountaineers uh, Monday night. So that's a good move by uh, Dustin Kearns, getting the big guy down there on the little guy. Here's Adrian Delf from Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Rattles it home. This is another guy right here, John, that had multiple Division I offers in high school, especially at the mid-major level, and was recruited by Jim Fox, of course, has elected to stay when Dustin Kearns took the job a few years ago. And he'll go two for two with the charity stripe. Back and forth we go in the first half. David Sloan with the basketball now, the senior from Louisville. Known as a downhill driver for this Buccaneers unit. And the bank is open after five in Boone, North Carolina. Boy, I tell you what, you got to call those in the gym at the wire on the playground. You don't get them. Five-point lead for the Buccaneers, their largest of the first half so far. Delph trying to post up Sloan. And this one through the hands of Almonese. Here comes Patterson, and the left-hand layup, good. Finishes with style. Vonnie Patterson, eight early first-half points. And the lead continues to grow for the Buccaneers. And you can tell Desmond Oliver's watched a lot of film of Iona. Active hands from Charles. And the Mountaineers knock it loose. And it was last touched by Charles. And now the officials are going to convene along the baseline. Will this stay with ETSU or go back to App State? It was off of Charles. Getting back what I was trying to say a minute ago, Kendall. Coach Oliver watched that Iona game, I'm sure, multiple times, and he's seen the majority of the Mountaineers offense goes through the top of the key. He's doing a nice job of denying that reversal pass back to that guy at the top of the key. It's resulted in a couple steals early. C.J. Huntley checks in for the Mountaineers. First time tonight 
we've seen C.J. Huntley, the big, long 6'10", wing player for Appalachian State. He's put on a little weight from last season. You can tell, bulked up a little bit for the Mountaineers. Here he is out front. Delph spins down the alley, falls away, and leaves it short. Back comes slow. Buccaneers want to push it. Catch and shoot three for Ladarius. And that's why that guy's an NBA prospect. He caught that shot in rhythm right in front of Coach Dustin Kearns and just let it go with confidence. Nothing but nets. It is a double-digit Buccaneers lead. App State with their backs against the wall. Again, a 12-point, 65-53 loss at Iona. Rick Pitino on Tuesday night. Mantis faces up. He'll hand it back off to Almonese. Shot clock's at 11. Mantis sets his feet. 0 for 2 from 3, but Huntley snags the rebound. A fresh 20 on the shot clock for the Mountaineers. Delph will launch, and this time it's good. When he takes his time and steps into it, he's as good a shooter as there is in some belt conference. Big time 3 for the Mountaineers after ETSU had made their last four shots. 7.24 to go in the first half. We'll be right back. More college basketball at ESPN. There's Dustin Kearns, third-year head coach for the Appalachian State Mountaineers, guided the Mountaineers to an NCAA tournament appearance last year. You see the first Sun Belt title since 2001. How about this, though? Back-to-back -back winning records. And you look at what he did in two years at Presbyterian in the Big South, John, he really took that program to new heights, and Appalachian State is now a staple in the Sun Belt Conference. Well, and, and he's earned it, and he's earned, he's earned it the hard way. He's, uh, he's worked hard to develop his players. He's recruited well, and um, as long as he's here, the Mountaineers are going to be a factor in the Sun Belt Conference. Turnover for the Buccaneers. That's their second of the first half. They've done a nice job of taking care of the basketball. This is their season opener. Again, they played a exhibition game against Division II Catawba last week. And Delph will kick it back to Justin Forrest. And pushed off. That's his third. Oh, no. That's the worst thing that could have happened for Dustin Kearns and the Mountaineers. I'd like to see that one again. I don't know about that. Justin needs to get to the bench and settle down, though. He doesn't need to pick up a technical foul here. That is Justin's third foul in the first half. Yeah, that, that kind of looked like a flop to me, Kendall. I don't know about that. That is a big-time shift in this basketball game. Brewer, step back, Jay. And Almonese pulls down the rebound with six and a half to go in the first half. Mountaineers need a bucket. Nice dump pass. it inside. Gregory muscles it up for two. I'd like to see more of that from the Mountaineers. They're really hedging high on that screen on the post above the key. All they got to do is duck in and dive down, just like Donovan Gregory did. All of a sudden, the Holmes Convocation Center starting to amp up. Mountaineers on a 5-0 run. They trailed 26-16 by 10 just a few minutes ago. Catch and shoot from King. In and out, Gregory, the Swiss Army knife for the Mountaineers, pulls away the rebound. Almonese splashes another three. And I'm going to tell you, the Mountaineers are a different team when Donovan Gregory takes it off the rim and goes coast to coast. He's a guard playing a forward position. He can do it all. Desmond Oliver wants a timeout here inside of the home Convocation Center. And we'll keep it right here with him. A two-point game. In the first half, let's take a look at that last three ball from the fifth year senior, Michael Almonese. Almonese, very streaky three-point shooter, but once again, like most good shooters, he gets his feet set and shoots it in rhythm. He's going to make it most of the time. So the Mountaineers on an 8-0 run over the last 152. And, John, we knew these two teams matched up well on paper. Right now, ETSU 48% from the field, App State 47%. This is a classic basketball game like we thought it would be. Well, they, they really like to play against each other. They're rivals, less than an hour away. Uh, like I said, veteran team, good players. 
uh, above average scores across the board for both teams. So uh, the fact that they're shooting the ball well does not surprise me. Get a look at the Mountaineers huddle. Yeah, this is a series that dates back 60 years, as you can tell, 127th all-time meeting between these two. And look how tightly contested it is. 65-53, these two teams meeting in Boone for the first time since the 08-09 season and only a little over an hour apart, Johnson City from Boone, North Carolina. And I'm gonna tell you, and being an app grad myself back in the uh, early 80s, I'm gonna tell you, they, they used to play twice a year in the Southern Conference and there's a lot of people in both Johnson City and Boone that would love to see them play twice a year. Adeke picked up his dribble, the shot clock's in single digits. King doesn't need a lot of space, neither does Sloan. Back to King again. Open look in the rim, unkind. Big time rebound for the Mountaineers. Mountaineers went 2-3 zone out of the timeout. Good adjustment by Dustin Kearns to give him a different look. Justin Forrest on the bench with three fouls here in the first half for Appalachian State. Terrence Harkum, the freshman, kicks it out for Delph again. A fight for the rebound and pulled in by King. Here come the Buccaneers. Extra pass, Ladarius Brewer, wide open look, and a rare miss. Yeah, he won't miss many of those when he gets a good open look like that. Ladarius Brewer in the first half, only five points. He has made a three. Huntley from deep. I would have liked to see Donovan Gregory just take that ball to the rim. He had the smaller guard on him. Sloan sets his feet and cashes in. You bet. David Sloan, the preseason All-Southern Conference selection, knocking it down from deep. 41% last year, Kendall, that's well above average. He's got a nice looking stroke. Almonese, nowhere to go with 17 on the shot clock. How about this ETSU defense in the first half? They mix it up, man to man in some two, three zone in the half court. And they're long, they're long, aggressive, and they're quick. King up ahead, Ladarius Brewer, the Euro, and the putback. Cleans it up off the glass. Mountaineer transition defense wasn't up to par that time. A couple guys jogging behind the play. Dustin Kearns is not real happy about it. And the Mountaineers, three of 22 from three-point land in their loss on Tuesday night at Iona. This team already in the first half, though, has made exactly what they did for the entire game, but three of 11. They started off hot from three. Fall away jumper. Gregory lost it out of bounds, and it'll go back to the Buccaneers after the timeout. 3.16 to go in the first half. Appalachian State and ETSU. Seven point ball game. Don't go anywhere. Get your popcorn ready. We've got a good one tonight in the mountains. Thirty-one twenty-four ETSU on top of Appalachian State with 3.16 to go in the first half. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you. So this has been a back and forth first half, John, but what do you want to see from the Mountaineers to maybe get back in this thing in the final three minutes of the half? Well, I tell you, I'd love to see them spread the floor and go five out. The, the Bucks are doing such a great job of denying passing lanes on the perimeter. I think you could get some backdoor cuts for some easy buckets but they've got somebody going block to block, which is clogging up the front of the rim. King from NBA range. Man, this was last touch by the Buccaneers. Don't let that fool you right there. Jordan King, he can shoot it from there. He's got logo range for ETSU and the green light to shoot it from anywhere on the floor for the Buccaneers. Ty Brewer will have a seat for ETSU. Nobody really in foul trouble for the Buccaneers right now. They've got the, in terms of that, how that shakes out, Justin Forrest with three for the Mountaineers. They've only got five team fouls in the first half. Each team with five apiece. Harkum, nice drop off. What a dish, and Duhart finishes it off glass. Well, I like this freshman Harkum. Boy, he's, he's got a lot of game. And he doesn't seem like he's rattled at all by this atmosphere either. 
Lead is down to five for the Buccaneers. A raucous environment, largest crowd inside of the Holmes Convocation Center in many years. Ladarius Brewer, teardrop, short, right into the hands of Nunez, and he puts it in. Yeah, R.J. Duhart's got to go up with two hands right there and get strong with that ball. He basically gave him a free two points. Cordell Charles with the bucket for ETSU correction. Just right into his hands. Look what I found. And Michael Eads nearly lost the rock there. Inside of James Lewis Jr. The spin. And finally lassoed in by Weber. Here comes Brewer in transition. Jordan King surveys the floor. Brewer from deep. A fight for the rebound and over the back. The foul called on Yasser. Good box out by Mike Weeds on the weak side on that three-point shot. Most three-point shots are going to go the other way. Excellent job by the young sophomore. Final 121 of the first half. And no Justin Forrest on the floor right now. Out with three fouls as Eads will have a seat. Adrian Delph is back into the basketball game as well for the Mountaineers. Michael Almonese, again, Sunbelt tournament record, 20 made threes over the course of four days in the Mountaineers championship run. Good strong move by James Lewis Jr. He's got to finish that though. King looking for the baseline. It was sealed off. Yasser from Egypt can shoot it. Nice pass. Inside of a decade. Wild shot. And this one picked up by Harkum and the Mountaineers. 43 seconds to go in the first half. And a foul. Foul on King trying to fight through that big screen by James Lewis Jr. And I like that. I like that aggressiveness by the Bucks to fight through things instead of running around them. A couple of substitutions in for ETSU. Ty Brewers back in. As well as Ladarius. Remember the two Brewer brothers. Phenomenal athletes for ETSU. You know about Ladarius, NBA prospect right now. The second trip to the charity stripe for big James Lewis Jr. Adeke pulls down the rebound. And that's another thing that hamstrung the Mountaineers Monday night against Iona, missing free throws. This would tap around right into the hands of James Lewis Jr. Do you play for one right here? The shot clock is at 24, game clock at 25. I think I would. You got it at seven right now. You can make two, you know, you cut it down. A three would be awesome. But uh, you, do, you don't want them running out again. They don't, they don't need a lot of time to score. So I would take it down, maybe shoot it with four seconds, give yourself a chance for an offensive rebound. Almonese holds. Game clock at six. Almonese kicks. Delph, teardrop. Yes! Nice and the first half comes to a close. Nice execution by the Mountaineers. 33-28. What a ball game here in Boone, North Carolina. We'll take a break. We've got plenty coming for you at the half on ESPN Plus, an old school mountain rivalry. We'll continue. Buccaneers and Mountaineers right after this. It's 33-28 here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Well, ETSU, they've been a staple at the top of the Southern Conference over the course of the last six years. We'll take a look at the Southern Conference preseason poll and predicted order of finish. And you see it right there. They have the Buccaneers picked to finish third in the Southern Conference regular season. Chattanooga, great program. Furman with Bob Ritchie. Two very good programs at the top of that league by the coaches, but I'll tell you what, ETSU, Mercer, and Wofford might have something to say about that by the end of the year. This has proven to be one of the best mid-major basketball leagues over the last several years. Yeah, UNC Greensboro's falling down a little bit, Wes Miller leaving, uh, moving up the coaching ranks, did an excellent job there. But I agree with you, Kendall. I think any of those top five teams there 
could end up in that top spot. There's a lot of balance, a lot of returning veterans on all five of those teams, top scores coming back, and they're all very well coached. And let's take a look at the Sun Belt preseason coaches poll. Appalachian State feels like maybe they were a little bit disrespected, picked to finish fourth after winning the conference tournament last year and making an NCAA tournament appearance. And John, they returned more players than anybody in this conference off last year's squad. Well, they returned everybody, and they added <laughs> two quality freshmen. Yeah, yeah and, everybody. Uh, Georgia State is kind of in the same boat as the Mountaineers. They didn't return everybody, but I believe they returned all five starters. Louisiana lost a lot of good players, but they also brought some in through the transfer portal. Texas State, very similar to the Mountaineers in Georgia State, got a lot of guys back, most of their better players back. And, uh, but I agree with you. I, I think number four might be a little bit too low. I think they're basing a lot of that on talent instead of a complete program, guys knowing how to play together. And of course, you can never count out Richie Riley and the South Alabama Jaguar as a very good young coach in the Sun Belt Conference. But Rob Lanier's Georgia State Panthers picked to win the Sun Belt this season. The funny thing about it was that was who Appalachian State had to, de to defeat in the championship game last year to claim that automatic berth in the NCAA tournament. Those two teams met five times last year. And Georgia State had a lot of COVID issues last year. I think that might have held them back a little bit, but I'm still scratching my head about the Mountaineers at number four. App State has the basketball to start the second half, trailing by five. 127th all-time meeting between these two programs. Harkum put back and it rolls off the rim unkind for James Lewis Jr. Yeah, should have flushed that one right there. He was up there. He should have just, instead of putting it in soft, should have pounded it through. Pull up Jay for David Sloan. Smooth as silk, John. I like that kid. I tell you what, he scores at all three levels and I'm telling you, he's got a nice soft shot. You saw it right there. He hit the rim three times and fell through. Adrian Delph dancing around the top. Justin Forrest did not start the second half. Again, playing, he's on the bench with three fouls right now. Picked up his third with about five and a half to go in the first half. Delph the lob. Lewis trapped underneath the basket. Nice pass. Great interior pass to Donovan Gregory. Got that bounce pass. The only way he could have got it to him. Excellent pass. You talk about a great look that time from James Lewis Jr. to Donovan Gregory. Five point game again. And Almonese pulls down the rebounds. Didn't have the numbers, instead he'll hold it up for the Mountaineers. Boy, Ty Brewer's doing a great job on him. Ty Brewer at 6'9", guarding the six foot Almonese. Gregory lost control, but found Delph in the corner. And a rebound tracked down by King for ETSU. David Sloan surveys the floor. Lots of ball screens in the ETSU offense. Good find underneath to a decade. And they need to get him going. Mountaineers have a hard time matching up with him underneath. Left-handed score, always right around the basket. Largest lead of the game has been 10 for the Buccaneers. That was around the midway point of the first half. Catch and shoot three for Delph. Cash money is Adrian Delph, and the Mountaineers will not go away. A raucous environment here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. A cutting Ladarius Brewer pulls up, and this one ripped away by Delph. Boy, they just ran the flex, Kendall. I swear, I haven't seen that in 20 years. Three on three, Delph will take it himself. Offensive board, nice finish. and the putback. Count the bucket and the foul for James Lewis Jr. And that's what he needs to do. He needs to just stop thinking up underneath there and just absolutely attack the rim. Here we go. Go up, big fella. And he took a hard fall coming down, but got it to go somehow. And a chance to cut the deficit to one here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. James Lewis Jr., his third trip of the night at the free throw line. He's one of three. 
This is a guy that got to the free throw line a ton for the Mountaineers last year. Shot 58% from the field. And he completes the three-point play. He was about an 80% free throw shooter. I think he led the team last year. 37-36. Get your popcorn ready. It's been back and forth all night. A 60-year rivalry. These two teams just a little over an hour apart. Ty Brewer, off balance, splash. That's the athleticism from the Brewer brothers right there. Well, all he has to do is elevate. He can shoot it over the top of any of the Mountaineer defenders. That's six nine, explosive off the floor. Terrence Harkum, the freshman surveys. Again, ETSU, a lot of man to man, but they'll mix it up. They'll play some two three zone. They've shown some full court pressure a couple of times in switch. the first half. Here's gotta the switch. dump down. Dangerous pass, picked off. Donovan Gregory should have taken that ball to the basket. And this one out of bounds will stay with the Buccaneers at the 16-25 mark. We've got a media timeout coming up here shortly. David Sloan, the trigger man, who ranked third in the Southern Conference in assists last year. ETSU's primary inbounder finally gets it into Weber, trying to muscle his way up, and Sloan can't save it. And this will go back to the Mountaineers at the 16-19 mark. That's a good defensive stand on that bounce possession by the Mountaineers. Bucks brought Ladarius Brewer off three screens to the weak side. They did a good job of keeping him from getting the basketball. Here comes the pressure from the Buccaneers. Their length, John, can really cause some problems. And I think right now, just a little token pressure to make the Mountaineers play with a shorter shot clock. It was a little bit of an Achilles heel on Tuesday night in the loss to Iona. App State struggled in the half court just like that. Yeah, and, and that's a freshman mistake right there by Terrence Harkham. He uh, just assumed that the swing pass was going to be there. Excellent job by ETSU to step into the passing lane. ETSU has a date at Tennessee on Sunday, just 48 hours from now. Desmond Oliver will take on his former head coach, his former boss, I should say, Rick Barnes, where he spent the last six seasons. Mountaineers in transition. Nice pass. Almonese to tie. Delph skies for the board. A fight for the loose ball and a jump ball. The arrow is going to favor the Buccaneers. And a media timeout with 15 and a half to go in the ball game. Three point game. ETSU and App State will continue right after this. So just how special is this ETSU program? Well, let's take a look at wins among the Tennessee schools. This team has 143 wins since the 2015-16 season, only behind Belmont. You talk about a winning culture, John. And if you're a high school player right now and you're entertaining ETSU, who doesn't want to come play in this system? Well, I'm going to tell you, they're getting up and down. They're defending aggressively. They push, they shoot a lot of threes. What's there not to like? No question. They got more wins since the 15-16 season, actually, than UT, Tennessee, the Volunteers. ETSU has been a staple at the top of the Southern Conference. And they've got a three-point lead over Appalachian State right now. SoCon against the Sun Belt. Brewer, the turnaround on the post up. And an offensive board, his brother Ty, trying to clean it up, absorbs the contact. He's got two free throws coming. The Mountaineers got to be careful. ETSU's really attacking the offensive boards. Like I said, that was one of my keys to the games earlier, Kendall. You know, they got 20 the other night against Catawba, which Catawba was probably a little overmatched, but they're starting to get real aggressive on the backside. Mountaineers going to have to box out and take care of business before they start going after the rebound. Ty Brewer tickles the twine on the first. Remember, ETSU had a 10-point lead at one point in the first half. 
Justin Forrest is back in the game for the Mountaineers for the first time in the second half. Remember, playing with three fouls, he only played a couple of minutes total in the first half. Here we got a little 1-2-2 two, two pressure. Don't know if they're going to trap out. Nope, now they're going to drop back in. Looks like a 2-3 zone. Extra pass to Eads in the corner. Big and shot. he buries the triple. Big shot. Good answer by the Mountaineers. A little change in the defense by ETSU, and the Mountaineers were ready for it. Excellent job of recognizing it. Lots of dribble handoffs in the ETSU offense. Sloan likes to pick and pop. They'll feed Weber on the block. He was pushed from behind. And C.J. Huntley is going to be charged with the foul for the Mountaineers. That is the second team foul of the second half on Appalachian State. And C.J. Huntley did an excellent job of recovering back to his man after hedging on that high screen. And, you know, it's a shame he got there and then he, he just picked up a silly foul. He's a young player. Young, that's what young players do. This game has been very well officiated. Our, our crew tonight, our officiating crew, Sean Cassidy, Gerald Williams, and Landon Brandis. That's a veteran crew in Boone with us tonight. David Sloan directing traffic. The shot clock's at six. Now this lady, he likes to go one-on-one. -on -one. Sloan looking for space. Weber, can he get it off in time? He was bumped, no call. It didn't draw iron, and a shot clock violation against ETSU. Good defensive stand by the Mountaineers. Now they got to get ready for this pressure. App State can tie or take the lead on this possession. And one thing the Bucks will do is they'll run and jump out of this man pressure. They haven't done it yet. Mountaineers have got to stay ready for it. Season opener for ETSU. Under the direction of Desmond Oliver. First year head coach in Johnson City. Forrest, shot fake. He'll nice kick. Pass. All modesty for the lead. Pass up a good shot for a great shot. Boy, those two guys have really learned to play off each other the last two years, Kendall. They're fun to watch. Listen to this crowd in the Holmes Convocation Center. First lead for the Mountaineers since early in the first half. Brewer, he thought about it from deep. Step back three. Tapped around. Huntley pulls in the rebounds. All modesty. Up the floor for the Mountaineers. Delph attacks glass. And just a little too strong. But I like the fact that he didn't settle for the quick three. Sloan to the bucket. No look feed. Ladarius for two. Ladarius Brewer, the NBA prospect, continues to prove why here midway through the second half. How about that find from Sloan? I tell you, Sloan is everything you want in a point guard. Eads from deep. Crowd's getting into it now, Kendall. Everyone inside of the Holmes Convocation Center on the Mountaineer side is on their feet. Two-point lead. Keep your eye on Brewer, cutting through on the weak side. Sloan trying to facilitate with six. Pulls up from three. Cash money. My goodness, David Sloan. And he turned to the crowd, John. Gave a little shush. Yep, he sure did. He's a player. Delf picks up the dribble. Eads, he checks. He was looking for three in a row that time. Sloan to the bucket, scoop and score. They've got to keep him out of the lane. He's pretty much taken over the second half, Kendall. Make no mistake about it, ETSU has brought a big crowd from Johnson City in this game tonight. Again, an hour and 15 minutes apart are these two programs. Forrest launches. That's big. And he connects. That's big. That's big. He's got to get going. We are tied at 48 inside the Holmes Convocation Center. 
We got big players making and taking big shots. We'll be right back from Boone, ETSU and App State. Appalachian State, one of the only teams in the country to return this much talent. You take a look, 92%, John, of their points, their scoring return, and how about 89%? I think that speaks volumes to Dustin Kearns and this staff, especially when you had a transfer portal last year that had almost 3,000 total players in the portal. Well, these kids love playing for Dustin Kearns, and I think they love playing it for Appalachian State. It's a great place to go to school. What's not to like about this place as far as playing basketball and going to school? Um, and I think they've got a commitment to each other. I think that speaks you know, more for them sticking together than any, anything else. Sloan into the paint again. He's dangerous there. The tap out, Vadi Patterson rattles it in. He is cash money from three. That's three makes from downtown for Vadi Patterson on the night. And I tell you, the scouting report is, is that he can shoot it, but he's very streaky. And he's, he's hitting tonight. He picked a good night to be hot from three. There's no question about it. Gregory trying to back his way in this time on Patterson. Here comes the double team. Eads nice hits look. it again. That's a mess, much better shot than his last one. Took his time. Good feed from Donovan Gregory inside out. Every time ETSU makes a run, App State answers. Tied again. Yasser. Looking inside for a decade. Sloan. Oh, Penetrates and kicks. Seymour. And the rebound long. Up the floor to Forrest. Good, Good find. And Delph lays it home. And I love the Mountaineers when they run, Kendall. They've got to keep pushing the ball on misses. App State has been at their best tonight in transition. A two-point lead for Dustin Kearns' crew. Patterson again from three. And Delph everywhere on the boards tonight for the Mountaineers. Don't have the numbers this time. Forrest, green light. And a whistle and a foul on the backside as Gregory crashed in for the rebound. But Donovan Gregory battling the much bigger silent Adeke, and, and he worked for that foul, getting around. That's all effort. Donovan Gregory, known as the Swiss Army Knife for Appalachian State. Only six foot five. He can play inside or out for Dustin Kearns. He's their emotional leader too, Kendall. They go when he goes. Two-point lead for Appalachian State. Mountaineers 45% from the field so far tonight. Just over nine to play. Hey, Gregory flashes high this time. Trying to get past Ty Brewer. High off the window, and Brewer, Ty, pulls down the rebounds. Where they're really letting them play inside. There's a lot of banging going on. Yasser can shoot it. Long on the three, ripped away by Gregory. Good Lead pass. feet ahead for Harkum. Oh, good strong finish. And a foul from behind. Wow, he went strong to the hole at 6-3 over the much bigger Adeki. Wow, and that freshman's going to be special. Harkum was ready to throw this, throw it down, and this crowd was ready to erupt. Well, take a look at this. Number, look at the strength of Donovan Gregory to begin with. Nice pass. Terrence Harkum, the freshman, at the free throw line for the Mountaineers. His first time at the free throw line in his college career. Did not go to the free throw line on Tuesday in the Mountaineers opener at Iona. Harkum, freshman from Butner, North Carolina, played at South Granville High School. They had a great 2A program in the state of North Carolina the last few years. A couple of Division I players on that team. And he set all kinds of scoring records there. King got a man in the air. Ty Brewer from downtown. Yasser, the putback, and he was fouled. Didn't box out on the backside, and Yasser got a run to the rim. Got to take care of the box out on the weak side. 
That is the second team foul on the Mountaineers. And the foul was called on James Lewis Jr. Dustin Kearns took a deep breath. Justin Forrest was in the vicinity with that scrum. That's Last thing they need is for him to pick up his fourth right now. That's Lewis's first. Correction, team foul number three. Each team with three team fouls here in the second half. Ty Brewer dancing around the top. Jordan King is dangerous as well. Loves to pick and pop. This time, floater off glass, you bet. I tell you what, King transferred him from Siena. He was all Mac there, and uh, he's known as a prolific three-point shooter. Showed he can put the ball on the floor there. Forrest might have got away with a push-off. No whistle. And Gregory. Oh, that was a kick. Turns it over. Here comes King, ETSU looking to run. King looking for space. A decade, the offensive board. Extra pass, Ty Brewer from deep. In and out, and Forrest pulls down the rebound. Here he comes in transition to the bucket. Offensive oh, foul. Wow. Dustin Kearns has got to be careful. That will take us to a media timeout. We're tied at 53. Second half action between ETSU and App State will continue. We're tied up at 53. Let's take a look at the last offensive foul called on Justin Forrest. I don't know about that one, John. Yeah, feet are still sliding. You got a guy that's 245. Falling backwards, that probably should have been a no call. That's Dustin. two unfortunate breaks for Justin Forrest tonight. King looking inside, it was deflected. Active hands on D by the Mountaineers. Five on the shot clock, King gets it off short, but the put back from Yasser. Boy, Yasser's really got a knack for getting to the offensive glass. I think that's his third offensive rebound in limited time tonight. He was the youngest player to ever win an, an Egyptian League title. He's only a freshman in the ETSU program. I believe he's going to be a good one, John, before it's all said and done in Johnson City. Well, he's already doing things that most player, young players have a hard time, knowing how to defend out on the perimeter and then getting sneaking into the offensive glass. Here's the, the drop-off. Lewis Whoa. rejected by Ty Brewer, and a foul is called. Wow. That looked like a pretty good block, Kendall. I don't know about that one. Ty Brewer almost hit his head on the rim coming to block that shot. Ooh, we I don't know, Coach. That was, that was awfully clean, wasn't it? I, I probably would have let him play on on that one. We'll, we'll take a, a second look. look. I don't see anything there. If, there was, if James Lewis got thrown back, it was with a force of the block on the ball. What a, what a play by Ty Brewer. Could you, you imagine how good the, the ball games were on their driveway, him and his brother going at it? <laughs> Holy smokes. How about the driveways in the summertime, on the, the games on the driveway in the summertime right now in the offseason? Wow. Here's Ladarius spinning. Gets it to go through the contact. That's why he's an NBA prospect, folks. 6'5", that length, that elevation on his jump shot. He just never gets rattled. Tonight we have had a raucous crowd. Ladarius Brewer has certainly looked the part. And a Adeke swats it out of bounds. Probably got a little bit too deep on the penetration. Parkham's got to pull that ball up right there at the Sun Belt logo, shoot a little drop, you know, shot, little, little bank shot. You, you can't take it into those big fellas. Well, this has been a well-officiated game. Obviously, we've had some controversial calls go both ways in this second half. Both teams with four team fouls. Delph gets it to go from deep. I tell you, the Mountaineers have had an answer every time 
you think ETSU is going to start to creep away a little bit. Got to watch the baseline cutters now. And box out on the backside. Dangerous lob and a turnover. A costly one at that for ETSU. And you got to give Donovan Gregory credit for pushing him off the block and out to the short corner. That's a hard place to post up on. That is only the fifth turnover by the Buccaneers tonight. They've done a great job. We mentioned it in the first half, John, of taking care of the basketball. Well, they've got veteran guards. And when you got veteran guards with a lot of experience, you don't turn the ball over as much. And you can trust them as a coach to make the right decisions. Shot fake that time from Almonacy. Plenty of time on the shot clock. It's down to single digits. Gregory's got to do something, bounces it back door and throws it away. Not a good possession by the Mountaineers. ETSU trying to retake the lead here, and they throw it away. Gregory in transition, rises and flushes it. Ty Brewer was chasing him. He made the right decision not to try to block that shot. Listen to the crowd now here in Boone. Huge defensive stop here for the Mountaineers. Ladarius lost the handle. Four. Picked up by Gregory, and the Mountaineers have it. Three Mountaineers on the floor, one, mountain, uh, one buck on the floor. Turned over momentarily, and then a foul. This is going to be an interesting call. It's a loose ball. Both players getting on the floor for it. That's unfortunate there. You have two players scrapping for that one there and just upended. Well, Michael Eads was the second player on the floor, and that's usually the guy that's going to get the foul call. 4.31 to go in the second half, 60 to 57. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you. Two old school mountain rivals, two great programs going at it tonight. This has been an absolute street fight. Brewer launches to tie, wow. you bet. That was deep. We've seen everything you could want tonight. Dunks, threes, and clutch shots. Forrest hit hard. Got to keep his cool. He's a senior. There was a little bit of contact on the ground after Forrest got hit. I think the App State fan base, they're wanting a little bit more, but it's just a common foul. Well, they, all three players were up in the air, and it looked like their legs might have gotten tangled up a little bit. I think that's why it went down so hard. I don't think there was anything flagrant by the Bucks on that play. Justin Forrest, the son of James Forrest, who played at Georgia Tech back in the 90s, is at the free throw line. His dad's here tonight. Saw him at shoot around, looking good. Looks like he can still play. Oh, I bet he can. Hit the game winner in the NCAA tournament against UNLV. Most of you back home probably remember James Forrest. Justin, interesting story, played for his father on the AAU circuit before arriving at Appalachian State for Team Forrest. Very good program on the showcase side of things. Justin's prep career. And the floater left short, but a whistle came in, which is going to take us to a media timeout. Michael Almonacy is hobbling off the floor. We'll try to update you on that when we come back. Final 350 to go in the second half. Although Harcum's played well. Head coach Desmond Oliver is in an absolute dogfight in his first game as the head coach for the ETSU Buccaneers. He prides himself on a few things in his program. This is what he wants to build it on, and it's right here. D-R-R-E, 
defend, rebound, run, and execute. And I think they've done that pretty well tonight, John. I think they have too, and, in, and they have uh, embodied every one of those uh, words right there. And uh, I, I can't tell you how impressed I am with how hard they're playing and how well they're executing on both ends of the basketball court. David Sloan is at the free throw line for ETSU. His first trip of the night, and he cashes in on the first. Well, this guy here is a senior. We told you a preseason All-Southern Conference selection. Was in the top 10 in assist and assist to turnover ratio last year. But I'm going to tell you, he's going to have a good one after the night. He's got eight assists with zero turnovers. And to me, he's been the key to, to running that machine for them tonight. And uh, he's the one that's making them go. And he makes them both. We are tied at 62, folks. Buckle in. Justin Forrest with the basketball. A quiet five points and only one make from the field. It was a big time three that tied the game earlier in the second half. I'm he, tight on the foul, David Sloan earlier before the timeout, Michael Almonese came out limping and he's not in there right now. And Forrest left it short. Under three and a half to go. Ladarius Brewer trying to s slice the baseline and it was poked out of his hands, out of bounds. Great hands by Donovan Gregory. Who wants it more here in the final three and change? Here's the skip. Sloan fires. And pulled in by Gregory. Well, the Appalachian State guards have done a great job of helping on the boards. Big rebound by Adrian Dell. Here's Justin Forrest. When App State needs a bucket, he has been the guy the last couple of years. And absorbs the contact. And it's getting a little chippy here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Yeah, Vonnie Patterson. Did not like that call, and, and I don't know if words were exchanged afterwards, but he's upset about something. Let's he's take another look. Maybe Justin stepped on him. I think that might have been what it was. It wasn't nothing purposeful. Oh, no, Justin did have something to say. He's got to be careful, too. He's got four technical foul. He's out of the game. And Justin Forrest with four right now. And they're still chirping. Officials are doing a good job of getting those guys to just talk it out. And both of them just need to be quiet and play the ball game. It's too good a game to be marred by something like this. Well, and this is exactly here. You have two veteran players going at it. This has been a physical game all night long. You would expect no less against one of the best of the Southern Conference and the defending Sun Belt champions. Step back, Jay, from Delph. Excellent job of finding the mismatch inside. Adrian Delph just way too strong for the Buck defender. And a foul off the ball inside against Michael Eads. Yeah, that's a mismatch. He just given up about four inches and probably close to 40 pounds. And, you know, I don't mind that foul right there. They're not in the bonus yet. And I'm going to tell you, if Adiki would have caught the ball that deep, it would have been over. That would have been easy, too. I tell you, that could have gone either way, Kendall. They're both throwing their arms around. That is the seventh team foul. So a decade at the line for the one and one facing a raucous student section. And he strips it. That looked good. That was <laughs> nothing, but I don't even know if that hit the net going through. How about this for the big fella? He steps right up there. The largest crowd inside of the Holmes Convocation Center in at least five years. And now the officials are going to warn the App State bench to sit down. They're up on the court. One for two. 
one-point game inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Oh, he missed him ducking inside. Forrest with 12 on the shot clock. Jabs, tries the runner, tip back no, but a foul. Now these are big free throws coming up for James Lewis Jr. Mountaineers have given up a lot of points in the first half and missing free throws. They need to make them here. James Lewis Jr., who's a very good free throw shooter, will be at the line for the Mountaineers as you get a second look at the contacts from Ty Brewer. And he steps up and knocks it down. This to make it a three point game. And short, ETSU can tie or take the lead here with less than two minutes to go. Sloan, wide open, off the mark, and a rebound for the Mountaineers. Wow, what an excellent job of the Mountaineers boxing out on that shot. What will the Mountaineers do? They've got to take care of the basketball here, 131. I'd love to see Coach Kearns go with a one low set right here, open up the lane and let Justin Force just take it. Four, he'll step back. And a long rebound for Jordan King. This place was ready to explode. King jabs. Nice oh, pass nice inside. Pass. No look dish from Jordan King inside the tie Brewer. The Mountaineers have got to be careful. They're going to extend this pressure out. All square at 65 with 53 seconds left. And a timeout with 53.9 ticks left. We'll take it with them. Don't go anywhere. Center, 65 all the score. ETSU and App State in a barn burner here on ESPN Plus. The largest attendance inside of the Holmes Convocation Center at a game since 2011, 2012, over 3,000, 3,101 to be exact, in attendance tonight for this old school mountain rivalry. And Justin Forrest is at the free throw line. And I tell you, DK's gonna have to be real careful boxing out James Lewis Jr. Took him almost over to the photographer's row over there and uh, officials went and said something to him. The senior from Decatur, Georgia, over 1,800 career points, approaching the 1,900 mark, smooth as silk at the free throw line. You got to know where Sloan is, and you got to know where Ladarius Brewer is going to be. Looks like they're going to call timeout and talk about it. And we'll keep it right here. All right, 67 to 65, App State by a deuce. Coach, what do you want to see on this possession right here for the Buccaneers? Well, I think what they need to do is they need to uh, isolate David Sloan out front. Mountaineers have had a hard time staying in front of him. And then behind him, I think they need to re run Ladarius Brewer through a series of screens to free him up for a three-point shot in case Brewer can't get his shot. So um, it's, worked all, it's worked all night. I'd be surprised if they didn't just put the ball in David Brewer's, I'm sorry, David Sloan's hands again and just let him go to work. This has been back and forth. You look at this crowd, look at this student section inside of the Holmes Convocation Center tonight. Kendall Lewis and John Reister. Glad we're with you. Just a classic college basketball game. 43 to go in the ball game. Looking to feed it to Ladarius. He's got position inside. There it is. Turn around. Yes, he ties it. And that's why that guy's going to be a pro, Kendall. Great job of sitting down on the block on Adrian Delft. Knew he had a size advantage, could leap over him and get a shot. That was textbook out of the timeout. 
by ETSU. So how does Dustin Kearns and the Mountaineers answer here? Well, I mean, you got to think that uh, you're going to put the ball in Justin Forrest's hand. He's a guy that's won games for you in the past. Pressure does not bother him. But you got to execute because, you know, you got to know that Coach Oliver for ETSU knows that too. So they're going to do everything that they can do, double pressure the ball to get the ball out of his hands and then hope somebody else can take the big shot. 35 seconds to go in the ball game. A barn burner on ESPN+. Plus. Well, call me a little bit biased, but I knew when we had this game scheduled, John, and, and I'm looking at the other slate of games tonight, and I'm like, we probably have one of the best games tonight. I knew this would be back and forth like we've seen it. I, I, don't, I can't imagine that there's been a more competitive, evenly played game than what we've seen tonight. This is two very good teams that are certainly going to contend in their respective conferences. When you talk about ETSU and the Southern Conference, they've been a staple at the top. And App State trying to defend their Sun Belt Championship, their magical run in the Sun Belt Tournament from a season ago. And this is a great matchup out front. Ladarius Brewer, great length, great hops. Justin Forrest knowing that he can get by him. Shot clock's at six. Foul, blocking foul is called on the Buccaneers. Let's take a second look. It's on a decade. That's a good call. Never had his feet set. So it's team foul number nine on the Buccaneers. So Justin Forrest at the free throw line for the one and one. And he cashes in. And a timeout. Desmond Oliver says, let me try to ice the senior from Decatur, Georgia here. And ETSU wants to talk about things. And that's their last timeout according to the scoreboard. So they've got to talk about not only what they're going to do if he makes or misses this shot, he's got to tell them you can't call timeout. So um, he's got to do several things in this, in this huddle down here. And he doesn't have a lot of time. It's just a short 30 second timeout. Well, ETSU will get the basketball back with a chance to win, depending on what Forrest does here at the foul line. Trying to make it a two-point game. And if you're ETSU, John, what's the rule of thumb here? You don't have to rush anything. If Justin makes this here, ETSU, of course, would take a deuce to maybe send this thing into overtime. I think you're just going to take the best shot that is available to you. I can't help but think, but but uh, David Sloan's going to take it as deep as he can and then kick or he can finish at the rim. 11 ticks remaining in the ball game, and Forrest makes the second. Final timeout burned by Appalachian State. Both teams are out of timeouts. 11 seconds to go on the game clock. If you're ETSU, what are you drawing up here? Well, I think, like I said before, I think you put the ball in David Sloan's hands and let him just come down and, and create. I think they're going to surround him with shooters, and then you attack the offensive glass. I think you've got to try to shoot with at least four seconds on the clock to allow yourself some time to get an offensive rebound, come down, gather, and go back up. If you're the Mountaineers, you know, you just got to, you know, play good defense and hope that you box out on the backside, which you've had a hard time doing all, all night. Uh, you, the last thing you want is to force a, a tough shot and then allow them to get an offensive rebound and get an easy stick back to, to uh, tie the basketball game. Well, this crowd is loud here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Eleven seconds left. For Dustin Kearns' App State Mountaineers looking for their first win of the season after the 12-point loss at Iona on Tuesday night. Kendall Lewis and John Reister. Shot clock is dead. Both teams heading back out on the floor. 
the 127th all-time meeting between ETSU and App State comes down to this. Every single player, well, nope, we got a deck in. Ty Brewer to inbound. Sloan with the basketball. Game clock at six. Brewer launches with four, short. Tapped around, out of bounds. Is there time on the clock? Wait a minute. I think you got point six on the clock. And I think that's right because I was watching the clock when the ball went out of bounds. Who are they giving the ball and to? And the basketball is going to Appalachian State. I think for a second, ETSU thought that it was last touch by the Mountaineers. There is .6 tenths of a second left. You just got to throw the ball in and let somebody catch it. And they throw it deep. And a foul. They're going to probably put some time back on the clock. Dustin Kearns is walking over. And the officials are walking off, so I guess not. No time will be added to the clock, and App State wins it. 69 to 67. What a classic here on ESPN Plus. Justin Forrest with two big free throws and then an outstanding defensive stance at the end to win the ball game for the Mountaineers. Wow, what a game. 19 points for Adrian Delph and the Mountaineers. And let's look at the last possession for ETSU. What went wrong, John? I don't think anything went wrong. You got a good shot, maybe a little bit too soon. You got to give Justin Forrest credit for closing out on a, a guy, Ty Brewer, that made at least three threes earlier tonight without fouling. Um, I don't think anybody did anything wrong. I think the Mountaineers just deed up real well at the end and won the ball game. Appalachian State is for real, folks, and they're trying to defend their Sun Belt crown this year. A big time win under the largest crowd since 2011, 2012. 69 67. ETSU will travel to Tennessee on Sunday to take on Rick Barnes and the Volunteers. App State back in action against William Peace on Monday, but the first win of the year for Dustin Kearns and his App State Mountaineers. Once again, final score, 69 to 67. For Kendall Lewis, John Reister, and the rest of our production crew, this has been a presentation of ESPN. To view this game in its entirety or other games streaming on the ESPN family of networks, be sure to visit the ESPN app or ESPN.